Welcome to another edition of Auto Mower Answers. This one we have titled Budget Mower Breakdown because here we're going to talk about the differences between the 115H, the 310, and the 315. Not a 315X, just a regular 315. For a few years, if you wanted to buy an auto mower and you didn't want to spend the money on an X line, like a 315X, a 430X, or a 450X, and you just had a small yard, pretty simple, the 315 and the 310 were an obvious choice for you, and it was really just a matter of figuring out what size yard you had and picking the model that fit that. Then Husqvarna came out with the 115H. That really confused a lot of people because it's in that same price range, and it has just a unique look to it and has some different features that you don't find on the 300 series. And then the 300 series has features that you don't find on the 115H. So which one's going to be the best bet for your property? Well, that's what we're going to look at here. So let's start with this first chart here of different options and features between the three mowers. Now you'll have to excuse our graphics department because we did make a mistake here. We should have put the cutting range at the very top because that is one of the biggest deals between these three mowers. The 115H is a high cut model. A lot of people that buy the 300 series mowers, the 310, the 315, um, even the 315X, which we don't have one here because it's you know part of the X line. But anyway, uh, people that buy the 300 series mowers, they often complain, well, it's cutting too low, it's cutting too low, it's cutting too low. I need something that cuts higher. There is nothing in the 300 series of mowers that cuts higher than the two and a half inches that you see here. The only option you have in a lower price mower that cuts higher is that 115H. And it cuts the same height as the 430XH, the 450XH, and the 550H, that 3.6 inches. So if you definitely need a high cut mower, then that's going to be your only option, uh, the 115H. If you can get away with two and a half inches, then you've just opened yourself up there to any one of these three mowers. Now at the top of our chart, we have slurp performance there in degrees. Obviously the 310 and the 315 can handle a little bit steeper slope inside the working area than the 115H. Search methods is a, another huge deal. One search method on the 115H compared to three on the 310 and 315. The 115H can only use the guide wire to get back to the charging station. It will not use the boundary wire. And it also only uses the guide wire to set your remote start points. You can set three remote start points with the 115H, but they all have to be on the guide wire. With the 310 and the 315, you get the option of using the guide wire or your right boundary wire or your left boundary wire. And the 310 and 315 will use the boundary wires and the guide wires as a way to get back to the charging station. Slope control is the next feature on our list here, and the 310 and 315 have that option. So not only can they handle going up a steeper hill, but they can also handle coming down a steeper hill than the 115H, especially um, close to the, the boundary wire. And the 115H, uh, it, it struggles to handle coming down a steep hill. We will tell you that. There's no denying that part. Spot cutting. Spot cutting is found on the 115H, not the 310, but it is found on the 315. Spiral cutting. Now, I use spiral cutting way more than I use spot cutting. Spiral cutting is, as you've probably seen in our video, where the mower goes out, is mowing, and it comes to an area where it senses a higher resistance, and it knows that the grass is thicker and heavier there in that area, and it will start going in a spiral until it blends it in. At that point, it will feel less resistance and then it just drives off and keeps doing its own thing. Spiral cutting is a great feature to have, especially in the springtime when you get that heavy and fast growth period in some areas, but not all areas, because then the mower is going to find them when it's mowing, and it's going to blend them in so your yard's not as patchy looking um, while you're in that heavy growth season waiting for it to all even out. So again, that's found on the 310 and the 315, but not the 115H. Profiles. That is only available on the 315. Now, you're probably wondering where you might have heard about profiles before. If you watched our video where we show you how to use one auto mower with two different charging stations or in two different yards and you know set it up for maybe in the spring and maybe in the fall, 
things like that. Um, that's what we're talking about where you set the different profiles and that is only available on the 315. Blade disc imbalance control. This means you will get some kind of a warning when you have an imbalance in your blades, whether you got too many blades on one screw or something's bent or whatever. That is only available on the 310 and the 315, not available on the 115H. Now on to our second chart here of important information about these three mowers. At the top here, we have the uh, estimated charge time as listed by Husqvarna, 60 minutes for all three mowers, but the estimated mow time, they have the 115H at 60 minutes and the 310 and 315 at 70 minutes a piece. Now, those times there, of course, are always going to vary because of all the, the different things you have to take into account, like the thickness of your grass, if it's wet, if you have inclines in the mowing area, you know, a lot of variables there. So that's just a rough idea of what you should expect from these mowers. The area capacity, they have the 115H rated for almost a half an acre, 0.4 acres, the 310 at a quarter acre and the 315 at just under that four tenths of an acre that they have for the 115H. The area capacity per hour, of course, because the 115H, they figure it can do more. It's going to have a higher um, square footage for the area capacity. Uh, weight, the 115H does weigh just slightly more than the 310 and the 315. The 310 and 315 are traditional traditional rear-wheel drive automowers, just like the 430X, 450X, 430XH, 450XH, on and on. The 115H, though, is a front-wheel drive. It comes out of the charging station, it spins around, and the front tires, or the, the big wheels, are actually the front tires on this thing. And down here at the bottom, the 4G Connect Upgrade, that's an important thing to have on here because... Originally, that was not available for the 115H. Um, there was no connect upgrade available for it. It was automatic connect at home via Bluetooth only. Uh, they've come out with a new card now. Um, it's a whole new kit. There's videos out there that show all that stuff. But anyway, uh, the important thing here is the automatic connect upgrade is available for all three of these models now. Now, all that stuff we told you, that all sounds good on paper, right? But what does it really mean in the real world? Well, we're going to show you. Now, we'll start here with the 115H. This is what you see when you flip up the cover on the 115H. You have the manual adjustment for the height of cut. That is the same on the 310 and the 315 as well. But the big difference is your power button is under this cover. Your menu screen is smaller than on the 315, but the same size as on the 310. And your keypad has no numerical keys on it on the 115H. Here's what you find when you flip open the cover on a 310 and a 315. You'll see the numerical keypad, your menu screen, and the standard button configuration you would find on the 400 series automowers as well. Now you do have the big stop button here that actually pops that top open. On the 115H you have a stop button and you can just open and close the cover for your menu screen at any time. It just flips open by sticking your finger on there and pulling up on it. And the height of cut adjustment on the 300 series is actually in another compartment directly in front of this area on the mower. When you go into the menu on the 115H, this is what you get. Two icons to choose from. One for your schedule and the other one for your basic settings. And this is the menu screen here for the 310 and the 315. This is the same menu style that you'll find on the 315X, the 430X variations, and 450X variations. You just have more options in here of things you can do to the mower to just tailor it more to your needs and, and how you want to perform in the working area. Here's a look at the menu on the 115H where you go in to set your remote start locations. You can see you can change how far, how often, you can disable it, you can go down to more. But up there where it says guide, you cannot change that. The guide wire is your only method of setting up a remote start location. So this is us doing the same thing here on a 310, setting up remote start locations. And you can see we can toggle between guide wire, left boundary wire, and right boundary wire. It's the same process on a 315. 
Um, the 310, 315, you can use guide wire and boundary wires. The 115H, like we just said, guide wire only. Here, this 115H is searching for home, and you're going to see once it hits the guide wire, it's going to completely slow down. Now, this is important because, as we told you, the 115H has three remote start locations, all of which are on the guide wire. You cannot use the boundary wires as a remote start location, and it only has one way to get back to the charging station, which is the guide wire. The guide wire is that important to the 115H that if something happens to it, the charging station will flash a yellow LED, and that way you will know there's something wrong with that guide wire, you need to get it fixed, or this mower is not going back to the charging station. Another reason the guide wire is so important to the 115H is because it does not just pull directly into the charging station like the 310 and the 315 and basically all the other automowers except for the new all-wheel drives. As you can see here, it spins around and then backs itself in. So that guide wire has to be perfectly smack dab in the center of that charging station underneath there. There are actually clips on the underside of the charging station to line the guide wire up directly in the center of that plate. So how about slopes and inclines? Here's the 115H trying to go up this steep incline and you can see it just backs off there. It just can't do it. So now it's going to spin around and it's going to go over to the boundary wire um, that is on this hill. And then it's going to go to back up and watch the back of the mower, which will be facing uphill. You'll see it start to bob really bad. See it bounces a little bit there. That's mild compared to what we were getting other times we tried to send the mower up this hill and it was trying to turn around and back up. And now we're going to run this 310 up the same incline at the same spot that we just showed you that 115H and how it couldn't do it. The 310 is just a little engine it could and it just chugs right up on over this hill. And if it can do it, obviously a 315 is going to be able to do it as well. So now here comes our 310 right down the same slope we showed you the 115H coming down. Remember the 310 and 315 have slope control as well so when they're coming down towards the boundary wire they will curve away before they get to the boundary wire. This is the underside of the 115H. First thing you'll notice is that the cutting disc sits back pretty far from the front bumper and you'll also notice that there is no metal protective shield over the cutting disc. Now you can compare that to what you see here. This is what you get with the 315 and 310 automowers. It's your basic setup that you find on the majority of the automowers out there. Your power switch is in the back on the bottom side here of the mower. You have a protective shield over your cutting disc, and your cutting disc is more towards the front of the mower than in the center. The 310 and 315 automowers use a single joystick in the center of the front of the mower. This joystick is there to sense whether the mower has been lifted or if there's a collision. Collisions on the 115H are sensed by resistance on the wheel drive motors. If you're looking to customize your automower a little bit, there are different colors of top covers available for the 310 and the 315. There are no accessory options like this available for the 115H at this time. Now between the 315 and the 310, obviously the 310 is a cheaper unit uh, price-wise. The 315 has the weather timer feature and the ability to use profiles, so you could use it at multiple yards or with multiple charging stations. Um, you could set a program for the spring, another one for the fall, you know, little things like that. You know, it's going to cost a little bit more, but inside um, they use the same parts on both of these mowers, so... You're going to get a good, reliable, solid unit, no matter which one you would pick, whether it be the 310 or the 315. There are a few other things that the 115H has going in its favor. One is that they advertise it to be hose washable, so you can just spray it down to clean it off. The rear caster wheels, you can replace them by just popping them right out and popping a whole new assembly in for each side. You don't have to split the chassis open to make that repair. And out of the three of them, the 115H is the cheaper priced unit. So that was our budget mower breakdown. And that's the main differences between a 115H, a 310, and a 315. Hopefully that helps you decide which one is going to be the best bet for your yard. And you're going to buy the best piece of equipment for your job you need to do rather than just buying by a price. Now, of course, 
this stuff is all at this time. So this is, as they say, card subject to change because like we said earlier, you know, when the 115H came out, they said there was no way to add Automotor Connect to it. And, you know, a year later, they're saying, yep, here you go. You can put Automotor Connect on that 115H now if you want. So this stuff could always change at any time. But as of right now, those are the main things you want to look at when you go to purchase one of these mowers for your lawn. Because that's the most important part of this process, buying something that's going to work for your yard. Don't go out there and buy the 115H because it's the cheapest one available and expect it to do everything that an all-wheel drive mower can do. You know, don't think because they say, well, it can do four-tenths of an acre that, eh, I can push it to do, you know, an acre and a half. It doesn't work that way. Buy the mower that is best suited for what you need it to do. That way you're happy and you're not calling your dealer or calling the uh, customer support line and complaining that the product you bought is defective, it doesn't work right, it's not as advertised. You know, go back through, look at our charts again. There's plenty of literature out there on these things. We just want to make sure that you pick out the best model for the job you're trying to do. We're not going to tell you that one's better than the other because it really all depends on what you're doing. We have used the 115H, the 310, and the 315 all in certain parts of our yard. Some places they work. Other places they don't. Now, buying your lawn equipment is the same thing as buying a car. If you've got seven kids, you're going to need a minivan or a station wagon or something like that. You're not going to go out and buy some little two-door sports car. You know, if, if you've got to haul tons and tons of, you know, lumber or materials or something like that, you're not going to be looking to buy a little Chevy S10 or a Ford Ranger. All right, that's going to do it for our breakdown here of the 115H, 310, and 315. And which one is better for you and what the differences are. You know, as we said, buy what you need for your job, not by price. So if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe to our channel. And we thank you for watching, and we'll be talking to you soon.